Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Jan and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to the service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording this service so that others can access, access it at a time convenient for them. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us praise our God who has given us life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us rejoice then, even in our distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. O oh God, you have claimed us as your own and called us from our darkness into the light of your day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the loving reign of the risen Christ. May we, the first fruits of your creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Amen. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Be God forever. Okay, I'm going to ask while I'm reading this, if there anything excites you or especially grabs your attention. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, worshiped him. But Peter made him get up saying, stand up, I am only immortal. And as he talked with them, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, you yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. Mm -hmm. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now, may I ask why you sent for me? <clears throat> Anything especially exciting or of interest? that jumps out at you? Came without objection. Yeah. Called together his relatives and close friends. Yeah. Yeah, I'll suck on that. Falling at his feet. Teaser for tomorrow. Now yeah. may I ask why you sent me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'll read it again. And this time I'm going to ask you, what might your feelings be like if you were in this crowd of family and friends? The following day, they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, worshiped him. But Peter made him get up saying, stand up, I am only immortal. And as he talked with them, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, you yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now, may I ask why you sent for me? Suppose you're a person in the crowd, a family and friends, and you were called by Cornelius to come in here. So you're, you're there, you're standing and you're waiting. There's something uncomfortable about hearing Peter say uh, to this group, 
uh, that the Jews considered them profane or unclean. It's like, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a downer. <laughs> well, it makes you stand out if you step forward even. Mm. <clears throat> I think that some people probably had a mixture of, of curiosity and awe and even reticence to receive what this man might be ready to share. Now, were the people with Cornelius, were they Gentiles? Was Cornelius a Gentile? Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah, he, was, he was a Roman officer. He was a centurion. Mm-hmm. He was very generous philanthropically to mm -hmm. the community, which makes him, I think, very unusual. Wasn't he also God-fearing? Yes. It makes me wonder sometimes <coughs> how it would be to get into the skin of somebody in this day and age who's been prejudiced, you know, there's been prejudice against them. Even Jewish people now, there's anti-Semitism, there's bad feeling about African-Americans, about Muslims, how they, how they, you know, how they process this white supremacy stuff, you know? Um, yeah. How I would- I think they probably live in fear day in, day out, don't mm -hmm. you think? And, and I think mm -hmm. they're very used to it. You know, they grew mm -hmm. up with it. Guarded, I would think. I'm surprised at Peter's question. Why didn't he just start, you know, telling them all the good news? Uh, huh. You know, like why didn't he? It it, yeah. it almost was like he's he was just sounded to me like he was a little put off by the whole thing. Could be. It could be so new to him that he didn't know quite where to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This yeah, I kind of think of the same thing from Cornelius's standpoint as he's thinking uh, he doesn't really know what to expect Peter is going to say. Yeah. It's almost like Peter starting from the perspective of, well, I used to think of you as unclean and, and maybe not, maybe mm -hmm. you're not really. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you know, looking down on them in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. I so. <clears throat> yeah. Well, both of them had a, uh, a, a calling from from God uh, in strange ways. Yeah. So they probably mm -hmm. don't know each other what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine. Yeah. I imagine that Cornelius is excited about this. Mm -hmm. I'll read it again, and I'll ask you what you will take with you from this reading as you go into today. The following day, they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. <clears throat> On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, worshiped him. But Peter made him to get up, saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with them, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for you, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Well, to me, what it's saying to me right now is it's so distressing to read the news these days about all this white supremacy and hate and everything. And I'm, I'm waiting for the call from God on both sides, you know? Uh, I'm waiting for that because the news has just been terrible. Yeah. I'm feeling excitement 
knowing that I'm going to hear the word for the first time. Mm -hmm. I have a Bible study later this morning. And I'll be thinking of that. Mm -hmm. Shall we move on? Sure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death is king. Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is all up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? I'll do this. Which one, Betsy? The second one. Okay. A song of praise. Yeah. Okay. Glory to the Lord God of our hearts, who are worthy of praise to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to the temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us offer our intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. May we live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Here are. <laughs> May all people receive the good news of Christ's victory. Here are. May those born to new life in the waters of baptism know the power of Christ's resurrection. And I read Redeemer. for Redeemer, Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. Thank you. May those who suffer pain and anguish find healing and peace in the compassion of Christ. Uh, for some reason it went out. You're back? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, okay. I'm reading for you, Betsy. Redeemer okay, of go. Israel, hear our prayer. May we be united in Christ's undying love with all who have passed through the gates of death. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. Do we have intercessions or thanksgivings to share? I have thanksgiving. Pray for Jake. He's sick as a dog. Who is? Thank My husband. Oh, He's Jake. going to get COVID testing this morning. Oh, no. Well, I have thanksgiving for all the wonderful people of St. Andrews who have supported us through all of this. Thank, thanks, everybody. For Patty. Thanks for answered prayers for Terry and prayers for Michael. Thankful for today. <laughs> Shall we move on? Yes.
God of life, you sent your son into the world that we might live through him. May we abide in his risen light so that we may bear the fruit of love for one another and know the fullness of joy. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation and gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world and for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for blessing our family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplish accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failure, failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation for his dying through which he overcame death and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Thanks. Hallelujah. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Thanks, readers.